Alexander Pappenberg with STEMI Aircraft. We're standing here at NBAA in front of a motor glider, the STEMI S10VT. Why are you at this show? Well, lots of corporate pilots fly from A to B IFR during the workday, and on weekends they want to fly a real aeroplane. So they come here, look at it, and fall in love because this is high performance in going places and in soaring. You can compare it to a high-end automobile like a Porsche. By the way, it's made in Germany, so it has the same spirit of engineering incorporated in it. And uh, it goes, well, like hell, 140 knots at 10,000 feet on five gallons of gas, and you can use MoGas. And if you don't want to do that, then you fold in the prop, you close the nose dome, and you glide. You're a high-performance glider, 50 to 1 glide ratio, which means for one foot you go down, you go forward 50 feet. And that is competitive. The other aspect of the airplane is that it has a variable pitch prop. You get full performance on takeoff, and once you're up at cruising altitude, you change the pitch and you gain more power. The engine is in the back. That means very close to the center of gravity, which allows us that you can seat people side by side. In a normal glider, people are sitting one in front, one in back. So the one in the back looks at the head of the other one. It's not really a social affair. Here you share the pleasure of flying side by side, and also in a teaching situation, the instructor is next to his student and can guide his hand directly. So that's a big advantage. Now, this is the same model airplane as Embry-Riddle used in the Green Flight Challenge. That is correct. How successful were they, and how did you feel about them using this airplane to try and win that prize? Well, we were happy that they did, because we think that it is competitive even though it has been in production for a longer time than all this green concern came up to the top and now is in the forefront of people's minds. So we're very happy that they used it and that they got a good result with it. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls and the straight and level mode provides one button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. Take us through some of the performance numbers. How long to climb? You said it was a 140 knot airplane. What does this mean to a pilot? Well, a pilot wants to know, when I have to start flying, how long does it take me to get airborne? 675 feet on a normal day with standard temperature, which is good, which is very good. Then you climb up with a climb rate of around 750 feet per minute, which is very respectable. Once you're in, in cruise configuration, you motor along at 140 knots, which, which is a lot of power. And the gliding configuration is you can play between 90 knots and 145 knots. So whenever you are in a thermal, you want to stay in there, spiral up, you bring the power back. And if you want to go to a next thermal, you want to go fast and not losing much altitude. So you speed up. And for that purpose, the flaps on that aeroplane are not in the normal configuration only going down, but you can also go negative which brings the nose really in the line of flight, which gives you less drag and more speed. Talk, talk to us a little bit about the kind of configuration that allows the airplane to be both a powered airplane and a glider. Is it a complicated process to make that transition in flight? No, it isn't. If you come from flying high-performance single-engine aircraft like Cirrus or the top end of the beach, it's very easy because you just turn on the power and uh, it takes five minutes to start the engine. You can do that in flight 
Well, you wouldn't want to give full power once you started it. You let it warm up a bit, then it behaves completely like a normal single-engine high-performance aeroplane. Now, it has a tail wheel which is steerable, and that is the tail dragger configuration. The airplanes before the Second World War, they were all tail draggers, because that was, was how they were built. And people didn't like it, oh, if I get too much side wind or crosswind, then it, it weather wanes and it's not very stable. This isn't actually, because the tail is so low, and the mass is sitting squat here in the middle, and it has a very docile behavior. Now, the second face of it is the sail plane, the Sora. And that is the high performance soaring plane because it has a wingspan of a DC-3 but not the width of the wing, which means you don't have the drag. So it glides along at a very high speed, very easily and nicely controllable. That's the beauty of soaring. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. What is the engine? The engine is a Rotax engine. Rotax is a very well-known company. It's a 100 horsepower continuous engine, which gives you on takeoff 115 horsepower. So you get a little bit more to climb up faster to altitude, to safety. And then you throttle back and you have 100 horsepower continuous on gas. And you can choose between aft gas or mo gas. So the concept is of that aeroplane, you do not want to be living close to a glider port necessarily. You don't want to have a tow plane to wait for in line to be towed up to an altitude where you can soar. Once you soar, you have always in the back of your mind, do I get back? Can I make it or do I have to land on a motorway or on a highway or in a field? You don't. Once you think you are too low and you can't get back to the field, Switch on the engine, five seconds, let it warm up a bit, and you fly home. So it's the safety. Are you seeing a lot of interest here at NBAA this week? Lots of people, and the standard of knowledge is very, very high. It's not like that someone comes around and says, oh, what is this? No, they want to know. What are the numbers? How much is it? And can I have one? And how much is it? Starts at $350,000 in the basic configuration and then goes up. You can personalize it like any nice car you buy and you, you go up to whatever you want. Alexander, thanks very much for taking some time to talk with us on Aero TV. Thank you for having me.